In this video, we're going to be talking about the must-knows when it comes to buying a multifamily property. Hi, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses and I'm here with... Sammy Leopolis. I'm with the top 300 loan officers in the United States and I work with Guaranteed Rate. Buying a multifamily, it can be a really smart investment as it's going to generate rental income while also allowing you to build some equity. But there are some things you should consider and know before jumping into the multifamily game. All right, Sammy. Tell me what I need to know, just from a finance, you're the finance guy, right? So tell me what I need to know from that financing standpoint when you're buying an investment property or a multifamily property. Typically, you need at least two months of cash reserves, but sometimes it could be as much as six months. Another factor that could make this vary is if somebody has more than one property. All right, so talk to me a little bit about what you mean by cash reserves. What exactly does that mean? A reserve requirement would be your mortgage payment that includes taxes and insurance. Some banks will require two months uh, and some of them up to six months for each property that you own or will own. So if your mortgage is $3,000 a month and the bank requires a three month reserve, then you would need to have $9,000 in additional funds over your down payment and closing costs. Again, it just depends on the program. Yeah, that's a big one. Depends on the program, right? So do you need to have that cash just sitting in a bank account at all times, or how does this cash source? No, these can come in the form of 401ks, IRAs, stocks, checking and savings accounts, things of that nature. All right. So a question we get all the time is, can rent actually be put towards your income when buying a house? Absolutely. 75% of the market rents or 75% of the current rent can be put towards the income. If the property is currently rented, then most likely the bank will need to see that lease. All right. I mean, that all makes sense. But does that all change depending on how much that you're going to end up putting down? Uh, no, it does not. It will always be 75% of the lower of the market or actual rents. Okay. So talk to me about financing and how the number of units affect that financing. Sure. Uh, the first thing is that anything over four units means that residential lending uh, does not apply. Uh, okay. If you're planning on living in one of the unit, then obviously you, you cannot use that market rent to um, offset the income uh, or are, use that towards the income calculations. Right. Another thing is that there are a lot of people that will immediately jump into, I want a four unit property. This makes sense because there are more rent opportunities. Uh, the issue becomes more units you have, the harder it is to qualify for financing, especially when trying to put down with some of these lower down program. Yeah, I mean, we get people that want to do four units all the time. But speaking of down payments, how much do I need to put down in order to buy this multifamily property? Uh, as a primary residence, you can go as little as 5%, maybe even 3.5%. As an investment property, you need to put down 25%. So Jeff, uh, where are some of the things that you must know when buying a multifamily property? So first off, you got to consider maintenance and repairs, right? When you own a multifamily property, you have multiple units and systems that you got to maintain. It's going to be more time consuming and costly to maintain that property. So this could be compared to an investment, maybe in a condo building where you pay a condo fee each and every single month, and then they just take care of all that exterior maintenance for you. Then there are also tenant issues obviously. Uh, don't get me wrong, no matter which investment property you deal with, you're going to have to deal with tenants. But in multifamily property, you have to deal with the tenants actually meshing and getting along with one another. And sometimes it can be like being a parent almost. Yeah. Another thing to consider is that multifamily properties tend to have higher upfront costs. Okay. So unpack that one a little bit for me. What exactly do you mean by the higher upfront costs? Well, it just generally costs more. And if you have a three family that needs three new kitchens to be ready to rent, then that one is going to cost you. Yeah, it's going to cost you big. Um, and I, I, that all makes sense. And, and I can say with certainty that generally a multifamily property is actually going to cost you more than that single family property in that same town. So along those lines of cost, another thing to consider is location. There might be some areas that really don't have multifamilies as housing stocks. Uh, very true. I don't think there are many back bay multifamily properties available uh, yeah. at the moment. Yeah, no. And if there was one, I mean, you got to be prepared to bring the checkbook because that one's really going to cost you. Now, here's one that you might find interesting. A homeowner who actually lives in a multifamily property actually has the ability to discriminate against certain classes. Again, this is only a homeowner who is living in that property. And I can't confirm this for all states, but it's here in Massachusetts. You're going to have to elaborate on that one just a little bit. Yeah, discrimination. We get a little, little yeah. scared saying the word. <laughs> so first off, college students, they're not a protected class. So whether you live there or not, you do not have to rent to a college student. That is a big one in Beacon Hill. There are a lot of landlords who won't rent out to law students because they don't want to be uh, their practice cases. Yeah, no, a lot of landlords won't. And that's exactly right. When you live in a multifamily property, you can actually discriminate against family status. If you live there, then you have the right to actually say no to young kids. And the reason is that you might be older or maybe you just don't want to have to deal with screaming kids in that unit above you. I also want to say that job status is another one. You may not want someone who maybe works late hours or off hours in your house. All the other ones still stand? Yeah, yes. 
religion, creed, race, etc. All those still still very much stand. And I hate to say this because not much makes common sense when it comes to the government, but it goes along the lines of common sense. If you live in the property and it's your home, then you have the rights to ensure that you're going to be able to find peace and tranquility while living in your home. Peace and tranquility, something you won't find with young kids running around your houses. No. Not at all. I can attest to that. Yeah. So, Sammy, I, I think we did it, right? Those are the things you should consider when buying an investment property. If you're thinking about making a move in Massachusetts, then be sure to reach out to this guy. He's one of the top agents in the state and will take great care of you. I can't begin to tell you how much experience matters and finding a quality agent will make the difference between a good experience and a miserable one. And look, if you're planning on buying a house here in Massachusetts or really anywhere in the country, quite frankly, then Sammy, he can actually help you as well. He works for the number two lender in the country and is actually one of their top 10 mortgage bankers uh, in that company. And I've worked with a lot of mortgage brokers in the past, and I say this not because, quite frankly, you're standing next to me, but he is truly one of the best in the business, and you're not going to regret reaching out to Sammy. Um, all of our contact information is in the description below, so let us know if you have any questions, and until next time.